You know, it's been a long time since I've uh, read a book about uh, the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. In fact, it could be as many as 30 or 40 years ago. But I just finished uh, Max Hastings' new book called Abyss. And quite frankly, I'm very glad I did. It is absolutely riveting. I love the way Max Hastings does history. His books about World War II are just great, absolutely great. The current situation in the Ukraine gives this book a very special edge. You know, the facts are pretty straightforward and fairly familiar. Between June and September of 1962, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev secretly deployed intermediate range, medium range, and short range missiles, nuclear missiles, uh, to bases across Cuba. These were accompanied uh, with thousands of troops disguised as civilians. And for good measure, he threw in fighter jets, bombers, surface-to-air missile launchers, all that kind of stuff. Now, the Russians didn't announce what they were doing, but the U.S. found out about it and confirmed that there were actually nuclear warheads and the accompanying delivery systems just 90 miles from Florida. As a side note, even though the U.S. knew the main points, the general outline, they were never actually aware of the huge scope of the Russian deployment. In the last two weeks of October, Kennedy used the combination of diplomacy and military threat to get the Russians to get all this stuff out of there. Now, while all this was going on, the entire world, including me, was aware of what was going on, and it was following it uh, pretty closely. And was frankly a little bit scared. Now this book is a narrative of this entire period. Max Hastings begins it much earlier, with Castro's takeover of Cuba and the failed Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. He covers the entire 1962 crisis from the standpoints of the Russians, the Americans, and the Cubans. He not only details the internal deliberations that were going on in each place, but he also expands his treatment to include the views and attitudes of ordinary citizens in all three of these countries. And I guess, because he's a British historian, he also pays a fair amount of attention to Harold Macmillan's role, uh, such as it was in this crisis. There are a number of things about this book that stood out to me. First, his, the sketches that he paints are the main players, Castro, Q, uh, Khrushchev, and Kennedy. <coughs> now, those sketches of portraits are very quickly and efficiently drawn, but they give these personalities considerable realism and depth. I found astonishing the amount of authority that individual and relatively low-level commanders on both the Russian and the U.S. sides were given to launch nuclear weapons. I never realized how broadly, broadly, uh, that authority was spread, and therefore how much of a ris risk there was that a particular commander could, on his own uh, hook, launch a nuclear war. For example, there was a, uh, one Russian submarine uh, commander in, who was in the Atlantic who was attacked with practice depth charges by a U.S. destroyer. Now, if that guy had lost his cool and got just a little bit trigger happy, he could, on his own hook, have started a nuclear war, the end of the world. Of course he didn't. And there were a lot of other relatively junior officers, commanders on both the US and the Russian sides who had substantially the same authority. Communications during the crisis were uh, a big problem. And it wasn't just the considerable delays in the communications between Kennedy and Khrushchev, but there were also serious, serious problems 
in communicating with the lower levels in the far-flung militaries of both sides. I was very much struck by the extent to which domestic politics were dictating the moves that Kennedy and Khrushchev uh, made. Kennedy had to be seen to be tough because of the hangover from the Bay of Pigs and the fact that he was, uh, quite frankly, a rookie. Khrushchev wasn't so much concerned with Russian public opinion, so much as managing the presidium so that he could stay in power. The only one who doesn't seem to have cared very much about domestic politics was Castro. I mean, he was ready for World War III. One thing I seem to remember very vividly was tracking some Russian ships that were approaching the blockade line. I had been under the impression that they were carrying nuclear weapons. The question was whether they would hold their course and trigger uh, uh, confrontation with the United States Navy. In reality, no merchant ship carrying weapons or troops approached anywhere near that invisible line. Soviet ships had reversed course the previous day, and only one of which was closer than 500 miles. The mistaken impression we all had was probably due to problems with the American naval communications. Hastings makes a good case that Russia's deployment of nuclear warheads and missiles uh, to Cuba it did not in any material way alter the balance of world power. Two factors contributed to this. One was that the United States had already positioned those kinds of weapon systems along the Soviet Union's frontiers in Europe and in Turkey. In addition, both the United States and Russia had submarines with nuclear capabilities uh, that were stationed very close to the coasts of uh, each country. And they posed at least as dangerous a threat as land-based missiles in Cuba. Hastings comes across as an unabashed Kennedy fanboy. And as I read the book, I could understand why. The hawkish advice that Kennedy was getting from all sides, and I mean all sides, the military, Congress, and so on, in the United States was incredible. He stood up to all of that and insisted instead on very measured responses to the moves that the Soviet Union was making. Very, very clever. Does this mean anything for the current slow speed crisis in the Ukraine? The situation seems to me to be just as dangerous in 1962. But there are some big differences. Biden is no JFK. Putin is no Khrushchev. And Zelensky is no way like Castro. The lessons that seem to me that should be that all the current guys better be very, very careful indeed. And it's important that military guys be formulating military plans and making preliminary uh, preparations, but they can't be setting overall policies. Leaders have to have very, very tight controls over their armed forces. And that end, finally, that diplomacy really needs to be used as effectively as possible. This book, Abyss, is a terrific read. Now, even though I picked up the book knowing how it's all going to come out in the end, I still felt the same suspense that I did when I was 18 and it was all going on. Max Hastings has written a lot of history books. He does excellent research. He has an excellent writing style. And I recommend him and this book to anybody who is watching this. I think you'll really enjoy it. I'll have another book to review next week. I don't know what it's going to be, but be sure to check in. See you next week.